So this is Stephanie in 2020. I'm so hot. <laughs> this is my hair, but I'm still really hot. It's ne negative 17 degrees out, by the way. I think it's negative 12. Negative 12. I'll put on the screen what that is in Fahrenheit. Okay. Okay, I guess I'll put the clothes on. <sighs> Okay guys, what's going on? Welcome to the video. Today we're gonna do just a super fun, super casual style video. This morning, your girl, she went to Tim's. So I hear there's something new at Tim's. So this video is mostly going to be about a certain topic that kind of came up when I posted my last video and a comment kind of really stuck with me. So the comment was, in your last video, you were eating celebration cookies. And in the video, I only had one cookie. And the question was, how did you, like, how do you have enough self-control to not eat the whole box of cookies? It would have been the same thing that I was thinking if it was eight months ago. Before I went all in, and before I ate to satiety every single day, before I gained 40 pounds, I would have easily been able to eat that whole box of cookies. Like you guys have seen my cheat days. You guys know what I'm capable of. But I think it's kind of a misunderstanding or maybe a miscommunication on my part to explain to you guys why I'm capable of only wanting one or even two cookies at this point. Now that you know I've gained 40 pounds and I've gone through this whole all-in process, just to quickly summarize the idea is to eat to satiety every day then after that like your satiety cues and your hunger regulating signals in your body and in your brain kind of tell you to chill out so after you eat as much as you want every single day and I've been doing this now for eight months I have no desire after I eat one cookie to eat a whole box of cookies my body is where it's at right now it's doing really well like this whole process has worked so well for me I have very normal hunger regulatory signals. If you watched my all in like science video where I explained, you know, leptin and ghrelin and how that kind of is regulated in your brain, especially when you gain weight and you have more body fat on your body, your body kind of tells you that you don't need to put on more body fat. When you're really lean and you're super hungry, it's because your body wants you to put on more body fat. It's gonna tell you that you're hungry all the time, even though you just ate. That's just not where I am right now. And I think it, it took me probably two to three months of eating a lot of food, like, you know, up to 5,000 calories a day to get to that point. And since then I've been like slowly getting better and better. So after month four, I have just been progressing even more. Like I feel like I need to eat even less every single day to feel satisfied. I used to eat so much to the point where I would just be like hard belly bloated. Like I would feel physically full, but could still probably eat more. And now I never get to that point. I never feel the need to get to that point. And it's very strange. It's like when I'm done, I'm done. But if I am hungry, I eat. That's just how my life is right now. And it's been really great. I say that all to say, I got some donuts this morning. <laughs> so we got some donuts and they look beautiful. These are the new dream donuts at Tim Hortons. Look how beautiful they are. Oh my goodness. So to answer the gal's question or the comment, how I control not eating a whole box of cookies or a whole box of donuts, my body doesn't want me to. That's where I'm at and it's a good feeling. Jeff is dieting right now, so. <laughs> and, and really quickly, I know you guys will ask, if I'm going to diet, like if there's ever gonna be a point where I'm gonna diet and just to really briefly explain it, cause I hate saying, go watch this video, go watch that video because I don't think you will <laughs> or I don't wanna make you do that. So I'm just gonna say that I don't need to diet and I won't because after I eat less and I continue to eat less, my body is way above its set point. It should go back down to its set point. So there is scientific evidence to support that people have a set point and my body is above that. So slowly my body should come back down without any need to diet. Okay, so I got a question for you. For me. Because I'm the one who's, who's more food focused at the moment. 
What one looks what one looks best to you right now? Like what one looks the so most So my delicious? favorite is strawberry of anything because mm -hmm. I'm a fruity gal. But since I've seen them in real life, the mm -hmm. one I'm most excited for is the Dolce de Leche. Oh, interesting. Because it's filled. So for me, this one looks so good. This is only for demonstration purposes. This is scientific. This experimental is just purposes. for science. First. Strawberry first. First. Okay. Best for first. Best for first. It's not filled, but it looks looks dang pretty. Strawberry is so good. And the sprinkles. This is so good. I stand my by strawberry love. Tastes like a strawberry Dunkin' Donuts donut but on steroids because it has this big icing thing on the top. Fake natty. You know Tim's does not have strawberry donut. It's the one thing I've always critiqued its menu for. I kind of want to say this one. Yeah. So this chocolate donut, I found out from, you know, taking pics from my food page. This is actually filled. It looks like it's just like a regular chocolate cake donut, but it's like, it's totally filled. If you split this, it's like a bagel. Oh, wow. With frosting. Super smart. So it's not going to be like a dry cake donut. Oh my god, you're gonna love that. It's like the most rich, delicious chocolate cake I've ever had. <laughs> Whoa. I don't know what you're about. It looks delicious. There's like, it's like crispy on the outside. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's really good. It's kind of exactly what I. Oh my I'd god, hope. it's way better than I thought it was gonna be. That's great. Okay, so this one better not disappoint me. This one, Dulce de Leche. This looks so beautiful, I don't even wanna bite into it. Oh my God, <laughs> I'm blown away. After having the chocolate in this one, the strawberry is the, not the best. Mm. This one's the best. Let's see what we got here. Is there a difference between the caramel here and uh -uh. inside? Okay. Whoa. Whoa. That's really flavorful. Good, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's good. really good, two for two. Now that I've had a little bit of sweetness, normally when I used to do like cheat days, like having a bite of three donuts would only like trigger my appetite more. Like I would be like, okay, now they made me more hungry. For me now, like of course, like my capacity is really high, so I could eat a lot of food. I could eat all six of these donuts, but I have no desire to. His mom made us turkey soup last night and we have leftovers and that's what I want right now. Like mm. I'm in the mood to have some turkey soup. Maybe I'll have a little bit more of these later. And that's, that's where I'm at. So as I mentioned, I'm really craving the turkey soup that Denise, Jeff's mom, made for us last night. It was so good and it has carrots, shredded uh, turkey, rice, potatoes, and turnip in it. It has like a lot of really good stuff. Oh, and celery. It's about noon right now. I'm gonna have a few of these like sandwiches as well that she made for us last night. They're so good, especially like with soup. With it being so cold outside, soup is so good. After I eat the soup, I'm going to be doing an at-home workout. It was the most requested thing that I've ever had after I released my last in the gym workout, my women's optimization program. I was flooded with requests for like an at-home program. I just want to do an at-home workout with you guys to see if you guys are still interested in something like that. If you are, comment down below. Okay, so before we do this little at-home workout, I have to address the elephant in the room. I know we still have our Christmas tree up. Let me live my life. No, I'm just kidding. So you're gonna see it in the background. I know a lot of you guys are gonna be like, girl, that Christmas tree needs to come down. It's freaking middle of January. I know, I hear you, it's coming down. On a lighter note, another thing that I really wanted to talk to you guys about is something that I've been meaning to announce to YouTube. So I kind of brought it up on my Instagram story. I kind of keep you guys up to date with everything that's on my mind. On my Instagram story, I brought up the fact that I was really, really considering writing a book. I wanted this book to be a way for me to talk about my experience, to talk about everything I was feeling, to even let you guys know what I wrote in my journal as I was going through this whole all-in process, share this journey with you on like a much deeper level because I would be able to write in so much more detail than I can say in like a 10 minute video. I really wanna share this whole journey with you guys because I plan on self-publishing. I have no idea what I'm doing. I've never published a book before. I've only written a PhD dissertation, which is not the same thing. I will show you guys every step of the way and I hope to keep you guys involved with the project and I hope you guys are excited about it. I'm super excited, so I hope you guys are too. All we're gonna be using for this workout is a 25 pound plate 
and a hip circle. Okay, let's get started. So we're gonna hop into a voiceover for this workout. And I'm actually back in Florida right now and looking at this footage with Jeff and I is making me really sad. Uh, but anyways, this will be a lower body focused workout. So we will need to warm up our core temp and I'm doing this by just doing some body weight walking lunges. And then I jumped into some dynamic stretching to open up my hip flexors. So because of all of your requests, I have been experimenting with some effective at-home workouts, so I can do more of them on my channel, which really comes down to having a good understanding of biomechanics, what exercises put tension on which muscle, and how to progress from week to week with only having minimal equipment. So for this workout, we're actually going to be doing it in a circuit style. Um, I've been experimenting with this style as opposed to the more traditional way, which is just like doing one exercise and multiple sets of it at a time before moving on to the next exercise. And I'm still working out which one I like best, but just for funsies, we're gonna do it in a circuit style, which is new for my channel. So for the first exercise, we are going to be doing a weighted walking lunge. So you can hold on to whatever weights you have, whether it be dumbbells, a gallon of water, your dog, a baby, you know, whatever you have laying around. And the goal is going to be to do about 15 to 20 strides. And I personally like to do really long strides and make sure to drive through my heel. And this just makes the exercise more glute focused. But if you want them to be more quad focused, you can make your strides shorter. After that, we are going to be doing a single leg hip thrust, which is honestly so much harder now that I've gained some weight. Uh, but of course you can make this more challenging by adding weight to your hips, whether that be like a dumbbell or a plate. And for this type of hip thrust, I really like to drive into the ground with my heel, which really gets my glutes engaged. And I do this in, you know, bilateral hip thrusts as well. It really does get them working when you are doing single leg hip thrusts. And of course, make sure you're looking straight ahead and not up at the ceiling. So after you do both legs, we're gonna be moving on to lateral band walks to get in some glute abduction. And I like to use a really high resistance band if you have one. So the main cues I like to give with these is to not only press out with the leading leg, you know, against the band, but also drive off the back foot of the non-leading leg. It's hard to explain, but just try it and you'll know what I mean while you're doing it. You'll get way more glute action going on that way. I did 15 strides per leg before I moved on to the next exercise, which is a hamstring exercise. Now, this is probably one of the hardest exercises of this whole workout, so don't underestimate it. So these are sliding hamstring curls. And if you have a yoga ball, you can of course do Swiss ball curls, which I've shown on my channel before, but I didn't have a yoga ball, so I just use a towel. And if you're on carpet, um, you might need to use something plastic or a piece of cardboard, but the idea is to keep your hips as high as you can while sliding your feet out and in. And it's an intense hamstring exercise, so I only did 10 reps, but if you have a yoga ball, aim for 12 to 15. Now we're gonna go back to the glutes, and we are doing an exercise that everyone hates doing at the gym, but we're at home, so there's no shame here, and that is frog pumps. So I just use a couch pillow to support my head, which is important to do because if I do them flat on my back, I just don't get a good enough range of motion. So prop your head up on something, whatever you have, and then of course put your feet together and then drive down with the sides of your feet into the ground. And of course, thrust up with your glutes. I added weight for these, but you can just use your body weight, especially if you really haven't nailed down the technique yet, but they're pretty hard with or without weight. So like I said, you're gonna be doing three rounds of all these exercises. And at the very end, I decided to do a few sets of abs, you know, just to throw some ab work in there. And then that was it. Okay. Oh. Alrighty guys, so I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I'm still out of breath. That was actually extremely hard, very challenging. If you like at home workouts, let me know. Subscribe if you happen to be new, I'd love to have you. And I will see you very soon in another video. Okay, I love you, bye.